one of the most unique episodes I think I'm gonna ever do. I say this now, and I'm only like six episodes in. Um, but this one's gonna be pretty unique. Uh, joined by, obviously, you can see, Dre Jamison, first round draft pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, we're taking a cruise, going down the back roads, and actually one of his uh, new vehicles made a big boy purchase. I'd say more than a big boy purchase. This is like a dream purchase. And uh, for somebody who deserves it, living in a small town, I guess not too small of a town, but living in a town where where if you don't know somebody, um, if, you, if you don't have a relationship with anybody, then you're not going to, uh, if something happens, you'll know about it. It's, it's not that big of a town to where uh, you can get away with anything. It's also not that big of a town uh, when you do something good that the community is going to know about it. And Dre, Dre has been uh, such an accomplishment to not only just the Hancock County community, but also to the Greenfield Central community uh, in Greenfield Central High School. I got the chance to play with Dre one year at Greenfield um, uh, on the baseball team, and I would have got a chance to play with him uh, a year at Ball State as well, but I stepped away for, for other reasons and other circumstances, and uh, Dre uh, had some had some exceptional years there before he got picked up and drafted last year by the Arizona Diamondbacks in the first round, uh, where he now is um, had, had a half of a rookie season in and went into spring training and got shut down. So, Dre, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, hop on this and kind of give everybody a, uh, an idea of what's going on in your world and, uh, and, and where you're at right this second. So I guess to kind of kick off, um, don't, getting drafted, I guess rewind back to getting drafted, what was that just experience like in a whole? I mean, it's one of those feelings I don't think anyone ever can uh, relate to. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a dream come true. You know, I've dreamed of this for my whole life is to get drafted and, you know, play professional baseball and keep competing at the highest level. Um, and, you know, on that, on that night, that's something I dreamed of my whole life. And, you know, when my name was called on the 34th pick, it was, it was definitely a relief, but also a, a thing where I'm going to have to keep going because I'm not to where I want to be. I want to be the biggest player for a world series. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that day it was by far the best day of my life, but the best day of my life is not going to be that. So I make a, a lot of people don't don't understand like how, how awesome it is to, to go into your first rookie season in spring training because you're not just seeing guys you've played with in rookie ball. You're seeing the big league guys walking around, uh, maybe not necessarily in the same fields and whatnot. I mean, what was that first? What was that experience like? You know, waking up in, in, in Arizona and in Scottsdale, Arizona, and you know, going into spring training day one. What kind of gave us a little idea of what that felt like and what it was and what the atmosphere was? Yeah, so um, I actually went out early for instructs because they do instructs a little different nowadays. Um, usually it's towards the end of your season. Now they made it before the season, so I was out there. But you know, it's kind of I was a little nervous, honestly, just because you know you're walking around with a lot of big leaguers. And, um, they get there a little earlier, but as you're walking in, they're working out. And, you know, you're, you're walking next to these guys that when you were younger, you look up to, and you're like, hey, I want to be that guy, and now I'm here. So, you know, it's kind of, it was a little nervous. I was a little nervous. And, um, but, I mean, the first day of spring training, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's everything you dream of. And, um, I mean, yeah, it's... <laughs> Absolutely know. sweet. Yeah, and that, that's the thing, too, is I don't think people understand... Um, I think a lot of people get the assumption you get drafted. It doesn't matter where you get drafted at. Whether you're first overall pick, whether you're the you know 40th overall pick, or whether you're the 900th pick in the 33rd round, you're not treated any differently. You show up, and it's go time. Fair enough to say? Yes, very. And they don't care. They really don't care because at that point, everyone's got the tools. Everyone can play. That's why you're there. They don't care where you got picked. It's now who's going to be the best guy and who can compete for a, a World Series and help, and help the Diamondbacks in the high situation win the World Series. They don't care who you are. They don't care what pick you are. It's who's going who's gonna to show up and who's going who's gonna to play. I think that's important for people to know because you get, you, I'm sure you get a lot of people that maybe call or text you or have that conversation. I just know, I know this for, from experience with, with friends and family that have gone through the train, spring training process. Um, you guys, the minor leagues isn't all what everybody makes it up to seem like, or even just uh, being drafted. I mean, being drafted one is an amazing experience and it's super cool. Um, but at the end of the day, you're going to compete with the other thousand people that are there that day that yeah. other thousand people that are that are strapping it on putting their pants on the same way you are because uh, the the diamondbacks the big league club isn't worried about where you were drafted they're worried about who, gonna, who they're going to put the best team together this year and to get themselves a chance to go win a world series yeah. um I, I guess going you know spring training where were you at physically um and where was your arm at i mean were you 
were you a couple bullpens in before they sent you home, or kind of run us through where you were where you were at prepared wise? Yeah, so um, we got out there during instructs, and you know we, we were throwing a little bit more of uh, more weightlifting that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I mean I, I 13 bullpens in, two live bullpens in, um, and you know I I thought to my like for me myself I I, I was doing stuff I needed to do such as. You know, fastball command was huge with me. I needed to work on my fastball command, and you know, I, I felt like that was coming along really well. Um, you know, velo wise, my velo was there, and then all of a sudden it just gets shut down. So it's it's tough, you know, because I, I've never in this time of my life or in, in this time of any year not been playing baseball, and that's tough. Now now I'm not playing at all, and it's you know I'm working out on my own and. It's just, it's, it's really different, so. What does that, what does that make, like, so, I think I asked you this question maybe personally the other day, like, when you, when they say, okay, you're shut down, we're not, you know, this, because of the coronavirus, you're not to train here anymore, um, you know, the big league club, that, that affects a lot of those guys that are on that 40-man roster, a little bit more than you, and I'm not saying, that, you know, you don't mean that in a bad way, um, because they've been there, done that, they're veterans, I mean, where does that put them in a stance of, of, you know, getting to work out and having the tools and the equipment to do so, uh, you guys probably weren't allowed to step foot on the on the facility at all, right? Yeah, so I mean, us minor leaguers, and you're not a 40-man or big leaguer, you're not going on in any of our complex, so, you know, as, as for me, I had to go to a little park, I had to throw weighted balls on trees, I mean, when, they, when you say, like, low, low, like, we were, we had some guys going to parks throwing balls, weighted balls on trees and getting ready. Now, if you're a 40-man guy, you were able to go into the complex. Um, but I think there was only a certain amount that could be there at a time. But they couldn't they couldn't treat one guy different. Back to what you said, it's if you're the best of the best, then they treat you a little different than what than what's what. If you're on the 40-man, obviously they're going to treat you a little better than what what they're going to treat the minor leaguers. But at the end of the day, they don't care that I was a first-round pick, 34th pick overall because I, I'm still at the park throwing a weighted ball on trees, so <laughs> they, they don't care. Like, they, that's not the instinct, but, um, yeah, I mean, for, for all the guys that are out there in, in the minor leagues and even big leaguers, I mean, still, they, they're not getting the, the best work that they can get in because game-like situation is the best thing for you, and if, if you don't have that, then it, I mean, it's just tough, just playing in general, just in general, but... And then, and then guys that... You know, for instance, you you were out in Arizona, at least where the weather was halfway decent, and it's starting to be better here in Indiana. Um, I mean, you may not have the guys to go work out with, and especially now since all the gyms are closed. You don't have the gym to go work out in. Um, so how are you trying to relate with that? And, you know, does the big league or does the does the organization give you things to, hey, here's a plan to work out on, or you just kind of do your own thing? Yeah, so um, when I first got home, I didn't have anything. And um, then our strength coach got out to us, and... We have like body weight stuff, and it's stuff that you can add weight in if you have weights at home, that kind of stuff. But it's basically it's nothing that you're going to gain anything off of. It's more of a weight program, body weight program that you're going to just try to maintain instead of basically try to gain off of it. So um, yeah, right now it's just all body weight stuff, throwing, um, no bullpens because right now I think we're we're kind of scheduled to go back in June first, but we'll see where that goes. But um, Right now, it's just we're taking it as like it's January, and we're going to start the season just a little later. So, well, that, that then that goes into my next question with the big league clubs or whatnot, and, and them saying, "Hey, it's kind of hard for you to test." I know, for example, even just in college guys, um, trying to say, "Hey, should I?" I know I'd be mid-season form right now, or you know, because a lot of those college guys were, you know, they were getting ready to start conference conference games. So for those guys, it was. You know, the question in the back of their mind is, should I, should I continue to mock like I am pitching every Friday night and doing my recovery days? Or should it should I take this time to uh, keep working on building and getting stronger? Um, what's that kind of thought in your head? I mean, are you, you're, like you say, you're trying to maintain right now. Um, but if you go back, are they saying, hey, we're going to ramp things up immediately? Or you need to be prepared to ramp things up at this point in time? Yeah, so, like, honestly, I don't really have an exact answer for that. In my head, I think, you know, play this season for so you play however many games you're going to play and at the end of the day you usually start like I, I should be throwing live and a bunch of stuff right now as we speak and if we start later I think this season is going to be short so in my head I think you know I do the same thing I need to be doing you know I'm still throwing bullpens I do all that stuff because at the end of the day I would have been doing it already but then you know you talk to some of the guys that Kind of 
Yeah, and that's, that's, I guess, the toughest question. I mean, I'm, with me coaching summer baseball and high school kids, the question is, Coach, should I continue to work as if I was pitching Friday nights like a conference doubleheader night? Or well, what should I do? Uh, you know, I'm advising, hey, just continue to continue to have that mindset of I'm going to throw a bullpen. Whether you have the tools, whether you have the catcher to do so, it could be tough. That's probably something you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, not a lot of guys can catch somebody that throws upper nines or even 90 mile an hour at all. Um, so I guess that's kind of a big issue as well, is you not having that catcher you can go throw a short bullpen to if, you know, organization and your pitching coach says, hey, we're going to start throwing light pins now, we're going to ramp it up 10 pitches a week, yada, yada, yada. That's got to be a pretty big issue for you. Um, you know, but I guess re- referring back to the offseason when you were you got called into instructs a little early, what was that like? I mean, I don't think I don't think a lot of people understand when you get called back, when you get called in to instructs early prior to spring training, um, that's kind of a big deal. And I think they, you know, not just because you're a first round draft pick, but I think that means something as a, they think pretty highly of somebody like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely, it's a good thing to go for instructs. Um, it just makes for your off season not very long. But, I mean, as you know me, I, I love baseball. So, I was all for, you know, we went to the Dominican. We, I mean, I didn't really have, like, that big of an off season that much. So, now looking back on it, had your full, you know, had a, had a, rookie season I guess per se in rookie ball and then you know getting to start your first you haven't had a full spring training which I think kind of sucks but you'll, you'll get to experience that hopefully sooner rather than later um, you know being a young kid growing up maybe not having the, the best of the best or much of anything I mean what is how does that feel to you and your heart and your family I mean that's got to be one of the in my eyes, you hear these great stories of people who, you know, grow up, you know, having, you know, all this money and, and all this fame and stuff like that. And then, you know, they just throw everything out of the way. I mean, what does that mean to you? I mean, that's that's got to be a big thing to your heart that just kind of, you know, made you kind of say, you know what, I've worked my ass off for this um, and I'm, I deserve it. And I'm, you know, has that, has that clicked to you at one point yet? Yeah, I mean, you know, growing up, not the best lifestyle as everyone else. I mean, not, not everyone. Makes you want to. It makes you work harder. Um, you know, I, I wasn't. I wasn't fed with food, spoon, or any of that kind of stuff. You know, my mom worked two jobs and just put a roof over our head. You know, some nights we we didn't have dinner. You know, laid on the table for us. So, um, you know, it wasn't. That was my lifestyle. So back then, I didn't think it was. It was horrible because you know, that's that's just how I grew up. And you know, as I got older and I knew I couldn't do some of the things that other people were doing, it's kind of like when I realized like. I had or I needed not not my wants but I needed what I needed so um, you know her and my grandma are literally I mean there's, there's no one in the world that I respect more than them and, uh, and my stepdad as well so uh, yeah growing up it, it wasn't easy and like I said I, w- I wouldn't take that time back from for anything literally anything yeah and I, I think that means means a lot and I think where, where I you know love you the most is that 
is your drive. I mean, you, the fact that he's not talking about it, if I make it, it's when I make it. I mean, he's not going to give up. He's not going to fight the dude. The dude works his ass off. Um, he don't care where he's at. He hit, hit me up the other day and we threw in the backyard. I mean, backyard in my little neighborhood. That's, I mean, the dude doesn't have to have when he, you know, a big turf field and weighted ball program and all this and all that. I mean, he's going to work hard and he wants to make it. So I just, you know, if, if I was you, I'd just continue to follow his path. We're going to do as best as we can here in the community to keep, you know, keep following you. And um, uh, I'm just anxious to see see where you end up, man. I, I'm really proud of you. And, um, you know, coming in as a, I think you know, when you were a freshman, you kind of, you know, I kind of helped try to take you underneath my wing and say, hey, here's here's the way it's the way it is. And don't let anyone, you know, don't be the best. Don't, don't. It's okay to be cocky. It's a, it, it really is okay to be cocky and say, you know what, I'm gonna step on this field and there's nobody better than me. Whether you're five foot five, whether you're five ten, whether you throw at 98, whether you throw at 108, that's the way I took it. I'm gonna go on the mound. I'm gonna compete, and I think you take that same aspect of it. And I, I love that about you, and I don't think I think a lot of people, if there's something people could take away from you, I think that's probably something you would say, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say what separates me from a lot of guys, my competitive fire. He's gonna get it. I like the whole saying. I see it. I want it. I got it. Um, and I think he's gonna he's gonna make it there one day. So keep following his. Uh, oh, damn, my it's bumpy and my voice is like. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny though. Um, but you know, keep following Dre. Keep doing. You know, watching what he does. Um, one thing I, I want to ask you before we uh, pop off here um, and break break away is, you know, Dre, what what uh, what what are some hobbies that you have? I know back in high school and throughout college you were a uh, shoot a shoe head or what people like to call it yeah. um where you'd buy you know nice shoes flip them sell them all this type of deal uh you still have that hobby or what's what's the hobby obviously buying cars nice cars is something that's starting to take over um what was that first purchase or what's what's the hobbies now and what was that first purchase that led to that hobby yeah so i i've always had a shoe addiction um since seventh grade i should say and i mean it took off because i mean Back when I was in high school, I didn't have any money like to be able to do stuff. So, you know, I made a, I made a good enough money to do what I wanted off shoes. Um, so I would buy, sell, and trade and everything with shoes. That's how I made money in high school, and I mean, still to this day, I still do it. Um, I have a lot of shoes, um, and then now I like cars. I love cars. I've always loved cars. I just never had the money to get cars that I want and sell and trade but even in high school starting in high school when I got my first car it was a Jeep Liberty it got stolen from out of Greenfield so. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crazy I know I never thought that would happen either and so then my you know my mom and stepdad figured up got me a little Mustang V6 and I had that for maybe five six months and then I sold that and then I got a Mustang GT sold that bought a chuck charger and then I sold that and I just, I've just worked up from literally from I've had I think I've owned 13 cars now 13 different cars um, and it all started back in high school when I had a little Mustang V6 and now I finished off with that from all that stuff I had a ended up with two thousand dollars in and I had a 2010 Camaro SS my mom's always like, why are you always trading these cars? And, I, and my thing was, is if you look at the car I had and the money I have in this car I have now, it's a huge upgrade. I mean, it, I, I finagled and, you know, such is the word called hustle. You know, <laughs> that's what I did. Uh, I was hustling a little bit with cars, trying to get the car I wanted. And it happened. And then now, I'm, now I'm into cars a lot and shoes. Those are definitely my hobbies. Well, that's good to know. And a lot of everybody, you know, you see people that, that oh, you know, they maybe not have a big sign, but they just go blow all their money. Um, 
Uh, that's not the case, I don't think, with you, especially having conversations. It's it's more of the thing of, you know, he worked his butt off for this, and he's going to reward himself, um, and, you know, he's going to make it happen one, one way or the other, and I think you should just, you know, hop on his train and watch him grow and watch him succeed. Uh, last question I ask everybody, Dre, for those people who have their mindset down a path here, um, looking forward to have path A and path B, and they're not really sure what path to go down, what would you say a piece of advice would be for people? Oh, um, I don't know what path A or path B is, but depending on... A better question, they have 50% going down one way and 50% going down the other. Say, you, you, you want to take the path that you think is going to fit you best. Uh, you know, for me it was, you know, am I going to work my tail off and am I going to do everything I can to work, for the, you know, work hard at what I want to do or am I going to try to think that I have the talent, I don't have to work hard and just go with the flow. And, you know, I went the opposite way of that because you can only get so far with talent and skill. Um, and you, you, see, you, have to, you have to be dedicated to what, what you want to do in life. And, you know, what I want to do in life since I was literally seven years old is I wanted to play professional baseball. And, or not even necessarily professional baseball, I want to be a professional athlete. And that's always been my dream. And I knew from at a young age that you're not going to be I would never make it to be a professional athlete without putting in a lot of work so um, you know I took I took that path and you know you just when you dream something you just go with it you don't stop you don't you don't ever think it's too big you know because I was always told my whole life you're gonna you're too small you're, you're not gonna you're too small to be, to be a professional athlete or a professional baseball for instance but and you know that's that drove me a lot because I was like you know I, I just don't see how size can matter and you yeah. know it, it paid off because I, I worked I worked and I worked and I, I mean, now I am where I am and I don't, I'm not stopping anytime soon. Well, good. Well, Dre, I appreciate you taking the time to hop in the car here and talk. I want to make this a little, little different when you want to give me a ride in this nice car. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll shoot at the end of this video. I'll, I'll put a little picture of it, just a little glimpse of it. But, uh, uh, you know, hard work does pay off. If he's going down that path of hard work and you think that there's a path easier that you can just ride along with, that I'd say uh, you're probably not going to succeed there. So, uh, you know, Hancock County, appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully you all enjoyed. We'll have another episode maybe when we get Dre sit down and talk a little bit more, um, maybe here in the next couple of years or so when he pops pops on the big league uh, squad and on the big league TV, watch this on MLB Network. So, uh, Dre, appreciate your time, my man. And uh, if you have anybody, shout out to your time. Yeah, thank you. I don't really have any. <laughs> no shout outs at all. In Gibson, so hey, for catching me, you know, because there's not many people in Greenville that I can just that I can actually go out and throw, you know. And I appreciate your time for letting me come over and stuff and throw. Absolutely, I'm always here. We're all here to help. Um, you know, don't forget, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll like me, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and hopefully, you guys enjoy this video, this episode, and uh, remember that you can make a difference in someone's life today, Greenfield. See you later.